G'day everybody, my name is James and today I'm going to show you how you build a variable bench power supply out of an old computer power supply. Okay, to start this build you're going to need some parts and the parts you're going to need are some plexiglass to make the outer case, some wires to go in between the banana plugs and the fuses, some banana plugs, some fuse holders and fuses, you need some 5 amp ones, 4 of them and one 1.5 amp ones, you're going to need some proto boards, with some screw terminals, um, you're also going to need a voltmeter if you're making a variable circuit, a power switch and some other um, electronical parts that we will need for the variable circuit which I'll explain later. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our plexiglass or acrylic and what we're going to do is we're going to cut out all our pieces and this will all depend on the size of your um, recycled power supply from your computer. But first thing we're going to do is drill out the holes in the front plate this is for the banana plugs and the fuse holders and also like the potentiometer, voltage reader and power switch. Now I went out and bought some step drill bits. They sort of look like Christmas trees for this job because I actually snapped two front plates trying to do this by just switching out drill bits because I didn't switch out um, guiding the drill bit sizes frequently enough and that's what caused it to snap. So you can either get, do what I did and get some step drill bits or you can just go up in size in about 2 mil increments, that's what I did anyway. And it turned out pretty good. So just keep going along here and you'll find it with some of the square parts, like your voltage reader and your power switch, that you're going to need to cut out um, them. So what I did was I drew a hole, uh, thread the coping saw through them, just cut them out, then just went along and cleaned them up with a file. Now again this will depend on your power supply, but I had to drill out a couple of holes and cut out a square shape with a coping saw, clean out a file to make the um, power supply input, and then I also drilled a few holes um, in the other one and also on the same panel as the power supply, cut them out and that made some vent holes for it, which is always good because you don't want it overheating. Okay, once you've got all your pieces happy, we can go around and start peeling off some of the protective plastic on three of your sites to make a nice corner shape. Make sure that you use some plastic glue and a square to make sure that they're all level and even. This is so we're just going to start putting the box together and we've got somewhere to put everything and measure off. I did this with the side where the power supply input was and then also the back. Okay, so now we're going to peel that satisfying protective paper off because we're going to install all our parts on the faceplate, which is going to be good so we know where all our wires go and how long our wire lengths need to be for our power supply. Okay, so now that you've got all your parts installed, if you're making the variable circuit, you can just install the potentiometer along with your variable circuit. So now it's time to show you how I made the variable circuit. Now I wasn't filming any of it, but I'd take a lot of pictures and I've decided to label them for you. So I hope it's helpful for you, so enjoy. 
Okay, so for this variable circuit, what we need is this LM317 transistor, which is the main part. This puts voltage in, adjusts it, then turns it into voltage out. The way we're going to attach this is with screw terminals, and while we're here, we're also going to add a resistor, which is 1.2K, and we're going to put it in between the adjust and the out terminals. Next up, we're going to add a new screw terminal, which is going to be used for our power, and we're also going to add a 1UF capacitor. So just line them up and solder them together. It does not matter which way they go because they're unpolarized, which means that you can put it either either. And then we're going to add one more screw terminal. This one is for the potentiometer. And we're also going to add 100 NF capacitor. And take note to the way I added mine because I put mine in the wrong way, which I later desoldered, then resoldered the right way. And the last steps of this variable circuit is to add a wire from the 1UF capacitor on the positive side and join that to the voltage in and then we're going to add a diode from the voltage out to the voltage in and then you're all set on your uh, variable circuit. Alright, so we've got a 3D printed case with a lid. So what I've gone and done is put the variable circuit in there with extra long wires hanging out. So I'm going to put this in the far corner of the power supply so it doesn't look like absolute sh**. Now I hope I explained how the variable circuit works. Um, I'll leave a link and photos to everything that I use to help me along with this, including the original instructions that I was following. So scroll down there and click those links if you want to build this yourself. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button while you're down there, turn that bell on. Alright, with that out of the way, let's attach everything in there, wire it up and then glue on the front panel and the top panel and then we're all done. Okay, so like I just said, I've made a 3D printed case to store all the variable parts in. Now it's time to wire out the power supply to the banana plugs. And the black wires are for ground, the orange wires are for 3.3, the red wires are for 5 volts, and the yellow wires are for 12 volts. We're also going to be using the blue wire, which is minus 12 volts, and we're also going to be using the green wire, which is used to turn the power supply on, and we're going to hook that up to the switch, but that just connects to another ground wire. That is the pinout for the power supply I'm using, which is a Dell power supply, but it's always good to Google a uh, pinout for your power supply so you know which wires do what and you don't end up blowing out any capacitors or something like that. Make sure as you're putting all the wires together that you do some cable management as well, it just makes the end product look a lot neater. As the case is completely see-through, you can see every single wire that you have wired up, so it's always good to make it look neat. Here you can see me wiring up a DC jack. I'm using this on 5 volts because I'm going to use this to power the fans on a soldering station that you'll see me make in an upcoming video. I've decided to glue the LM317 transistor with its heatsink onto the side of the case using some plastic glue. This plastic glue will stick to metal which is good. I'm just going to use it on there because it's also a little bit heat resistant which is what we want because this LM317 transistor will get a little bit warm. To keep this power supply on, you'll need a 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor, and this is just to add a dummy load onto the power supply so that it stays on. After you've done that, now it's time to wire your green wire and your black wire up to the switch so that it's time to turn the power supply on. It's time to put in our fuses for this build. So what you're going to do is for your 3.3 volt line, your 5 volt line, your 12 volt line, and your minus 12 volt line, you're going to put in a 5 amp fuse, then for your variable output, you're going to put in a 1.5 amp fuse. Okay, now that everything's wired up, it's time to test it. And we flick the switch and nothing happens. This is because we forgot to power something off the resistor. So I decided to put a LED in there, just a little green LED. And we're also going to drill that into the front plate. So that's another indicator to show that the power supply is on. Time to test the power supply to see if it works once again. And flicking the switch, it does work and stays on. I haven't wired up my little variable voltage reader just yet, so that's not powered on just yet. But as we can see, that all works. And as we plug the banana plugs into the variable circuit and attach them to a multimeter, we can see that the variable circuit works. So we can get a lowest voltage of 1.25 volts and a maximum voltage of 10.6 volts. Okay, so now we tested that everything on the power supply works. It's time to drill a hole for the green LED glue on the front plate and the top plate then it's just time to peel off all the protective coating of paper around the outside. And then just like that your homemade DIY power supply is all finished and ready for use.
you guys so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, make sure you click that subscribe button while you're down there and chuck a like also while you're down there. This project can be a little bit dangerous to make as there is 240 volts AC going through here if you're in Australia obviously and there can be a lot of things that go wrong in there like you could short it out, you could shock yourself. So if you're not comfortable with electronics, maybe put this one on hold for a little bit then once you get better, come back and build it. But it is a great project to have while you're working on electronics. Always good to have a, um, another sort of source of power there so you're not just relying off batteries all the time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.